Okay, welcome back to a new origin tutorial. Yeah, in this video, I would uh, like to explain how you can actually uh, yeah, create your own data files, you, how you can import them, and also how you can plot then this data in combination with error bars. And also I will show a little bit how to beautify your plots, how to change certain styles, templates, and how you can modify the X and Y axis accordingly. So. Um, yeah, in order to do that, I have already prepared here, as you can see, a data file. So this is just a simple plain ASCII file where I inserted four columns. All of them are separated with tabs, but of course you could also use, for example, comma separated values, semicolons. Yeah, all that uh, can be imported by origin without any problem. But in this case, I decided that maybe tabs would be uh, nicer to to uh, yeah to look at. So now we have uh, here our first columns, which should be later the x-axis or the values for the x-axis. Then we have here our second column, which should be the values for the y-axis. And again, I have prepared this um, yeah quadratic increase uh, yeah across the y-axis. And uh, then we have here our errors in x direction, and I make them uh, uniform, so we have always the same. Uh, value for all data points in x direction 0.2 and we all have uh, everywhere we have the same um, yeah, error in, in y direction which is in this case plus minus one yeah so now in the next step i will go to origin and there i will import then this data okay after opening origin now we can see this uh, the same window that we have also seen previously we have here our uh, toolbar and we have here a book which is which has been created, including a column for X and Y called A and B. And yeah, here we have here we can insert our data points. So of course we could now take the data that we have previously stored in this um, data file and insert this here manually. However, uh, this is a little bit uh, tricky. So it, especially when you have very large uh, data files. So of course the best idea is to import it directly into our book. Um, so here in this case, I will not talk about the other yellow fields here. This I can maybe talk about in another video. For the time being, we will concentrate now on importing the data. So what we will do in order to do that, we click here on uh, data. Yeah, in German, it's Daten. And then we have different options what to do. Yeah. In this case, um, the easiest way how to do that is we go to this line here, which says import from file. Yeah. And then we can choose various files that we can import. We can import pictures, we can import sound files, for example, here wave, CDF, and also some experiment specific data formats. Maybe there are also formats which, uh, which are directly stored from, from a certain device which we can import. But in this case, we have a just plain ASCII file, as I said. So I always recommend in this case to use the import assistant, uh, which you can also, yeah, uh, which you can also access by pressing control plus three as a shortcut. So now we have here our import assistant and uh, we can we can choose here between ASCII and binary. Yeah? Um, of course, I said before we have ASCII, so we can let it like that, but maybe in some cases you also have binary files that you want to import or you can even create your own user-defined data. Yeah? So the only thing which we have to do, we have to now press here in, in the case of file on these three dots, and then we can choose the file that we have previously created. And I stored this here on the desktop, as you can see. So now um, the standard configuration, I think, is that it searches for files which are uh, they have the ending dot yeah, for data. But since I created a simple text file with the note, uh, notepad editor in Windows, it's called data.txt. So now you have to press on txt in order to um, show the data file. Yeah? So now we can uh, actually uh, yeah, double click on that. Then it is shown here below in this list and this means the import can actually now proceed. So then we click on OK to um, accept that. And the rest actually we can let as it is. We don't have to change anything here. Now we click on Next. And there you can also change many things. Uh, some parameters you can change, units you can change, uh, numbering of the lines and so on. However, I recommend that in most of the cases you can just keep every setup as it is. You don't have to change anything. 
And you can also see as long as everything is shown here correctly, it means that the import will be successful. Uh, and then we can either directly finish that or we can also click on next again to see what else we can change here. But we also don't want to um, do any additional advanced setup here so we can keep that. And also here in, in the fourth uh, in the fourth uh, window, we will not change anything actually. So now in the last one, we can also do, uh, not, this still not the last one, yeah, here we can also change a few things. But as I said, we will keep everything as it is. Um, and then in principle, as I said, we can also directly um, click on finish. And yeah, then you can see here very nicely that the data has been actually imported. So here we have our values for the X axis, for the Y axis. And uh, here we have the errors for Y and yeah, for, for X and Y. Now a few things here, which I would like to highlight. First of all, you can see that you have some some preview yeah, which shows already the shape of the graph without even plotting it. And this I really like very much in origin. Um, and secondly, you can see that these C, that here these, these uh, third and fourth column are labeled C and D, yeah, which means that origin actually treats these two columns as graphs. And this we don't want. We want that uh, this column should be the error in X direction and this in Y direction. So what we can do actually, we can double click on that and then you can see a new window appears where we can change many things. Now, I don't want to go into detail here in this case. The only thing which is important for us at the moment is here uh, the, the way how origin treats, the, treats this column. So now here in this case, as I said, it is treated as an Y value. But this should be an error in X direction. So we have to click on X error and then on uh, accepting. And then we can see now here this changes to X error plus minus. And this is exactly what we want to have. And the same we can also do here. Double click on that. And uh, then here this should be our error in Y direction. So we have to click here Y error. Then OK. And now also this is changed. Now you can also see. Um, that uh, that everything that nothing else has changed. Yeah? So everything remains constant except the 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 labeling has changed actually. Yeah? So now we actually want to to plot that. So in order to do that, there are again several methods, but we will use the same one that we have used before. So we just highlight all the fields that we want to insert in our plot: a uh, x y error in x and error in y, and then we go to the same. Uh, to the same uh, button which we have pressed before, which is called draw. And then we have already used this uh, dot diagram. So we will use the same one now. We don't have to change anything. And when you click on that, you can see very nicely now we have our error graph, uh, including the data points and the error bars. Yeah? So this was actually very simple. And uh, yeah, what I would also like to show you now in addition is a little bit yeah, how to how to beautify these plots. So we can first of all make it a little bit larger so we can see more more details. And uh, yeah, what we can for example do we can um, double click here on the background. Yeah? And then we can see that we have actually two parts here. One is uh, called graph one and one is called layer one. Yeah? Graph one is actually the full uh, the full window where or the canvas you can say whereas layer one is only related to the part inside the graph so for example if we go to layer one and we change here the color to for example blue and then we accept that you can see only the part in the background uh, yeah is, is highlighted as as blue to so, so to say uh, we can also um, uh, undo that and now we can go back to graph and if we go here to um, display then we can here change the color maybe to this decent yellow that I have used before, apply that and now you can see the whole background is shown as yellow. Yeah? And the same we can do again for layer one, maybe we can use here white and then you see you have this nice yellow back, uh, background in the canvas and this white one here only within the graph. One can also set the level of transparency here to make it even more beautiful but I think in this case it's actually not uh, necessary. Uh, you can also um, change, you can also in insert a border here actually. Uh, for example, when you click on this, you can see that now we have some, some shadow behind this, which also looks very nice. 
One could also change more colors and sizes and so on. But I think in this case, most of the time you don't need this. You can take the graph as it is and it's directly in the form that you can insert this, for example, into your publication or thesis. Yeah, so now this is actually done. So I think it looks it looks already nice. You can also double click on these data points here actually, and then you can choose certain um, certain parameters here. Yeah, and what I would like to change here now is for example, the style. So instead of rectangles, I would like to have circles. Yeah? And again, we can apply this and now you can see we have this very nice circles. Yeah. This is just for, for practicing a little bit. Now, um, in case of the of the labeling, instead of having A and B, which also doesn't look so much nice, we can change that. By cl double click on the X axis, for example, then this new window appears where we can now um, change the limits, for example. Here it is shown from zero to six, but we could also decrease it or increase that. So what I would like to change now is the labeling. So we can go down to labeling and now we have this decimal numbers here, uh, which which are most of the time maybe good, but in this case I would like to have maybe a scientific, um, yeah, a scientific labeling here. So now you can see we have here this uh, 10 to the power way to write that. And here we can also change the title. So at the moment the text, you can see the title of this axis is taken directly from the first column from the X value here automatically. But I would like to have another one. So I would like to right here x values then i would accept that the same we can also do for the y values there i would like to write uh, y values and now um, it looks already quite nice um, what we can also for example change here when we click on this um, this this i have uh, not said before you can change the the type of the y and x axis so in this case for example we would like to have a logarithmic way to plot that so we can click here for example on on ln and if we do that you can see that now actually <laughs> uh, the scale doesn't work here anymore and uh, the numbers are also a little bit strange and also the data points are all in the upper part of the plot which is not what we want so now we would really have to change the the limits from where to where we want to plot so the upper limit is 30 i think this is perfectly okay but now the lower limit i would like to increase a little bit to maybe uh, one, uh, sorry, one. And when we apply that, now you can see that we have this very nice quadratic way how to plot that. Um, maybe one is not the correct value. Maybe one should start uh, with 0 0.5. Yeah, now we have all data points here included. And the access labeling is actually automatically created. You could uh, actually change that. Yeah. But uh, in most of the time, this is not very well prepared data, of course, and this is just some, some strange random numbers here. But in most of the time, the, the y axis values are already um, yeah, working very well. You don't have to change anything manually. Yeah, okay, and now I think we have this very nice plot that, um, yeah, that you can use for your thesis. Yeah, and if you want to use this, you could click, for example, on File, Export Graphics, and uh, yeah, now you can choose in which format you want to use it. If you want to have uh, yeah, a pixelized um, export, then you can click, for example, on PNG, which is um, lossless compressed, actually. You could also use bitmap, JPEG, or you could use uh, vector graphics like SVG, and then you can import this, for example. Or uh, yeah, in, in some, some cases, maybe some, some uh, programs doesn't, do not accept to, uh, vector graphics. So in this case, maybe you have to use pixelized one, but then you can choose the, the file name and the folder where you want to export it. Here you can change the DPI. I would always recommend to go to larger values to have not any kind of um, yeah, missing information at the end in your plot. But then in this case, you can see that everything works more or less out of the box. Okay. Yeah. And this is everything what I want to show in this video. I hope that you like it and enjoyed it. I hope that you also learned something new. If you want me to continue, as I said last time, please uh, put it into the comment section. Then I would really, uh, yeah, I would make a plan how to proceed in the, in the best way possible. If you have any questions, of course, also include it in the comment sections. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And hopefully see you soon for a new video.